everyone, the classic TBC beta has been running for just over a week now, and during that time, players have discovered a lot of interesting and unexpected things. I have personally reached level 65 so far, and I managed to notice quite a few of these things that I took note of. So today, we're gonna go over all of Outland, and I'll let you know about some of these things that are in the beta right now that we weren't expecting to see. Keep in mind, however, that a lot of these things could be here not on purpose, but because because the devs forgot to remove them or didn't think of them. A lot of these things could be completely removed from the game before the end of the beta, but some of them could also be left in the game, so just keep that in mind. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's start with Shathrath first. There's a lot of things that have been added to Shathrath throughout the patches in original TBC, and it looks like most of them are in the game right now. First, we have the NPC Harris Pelton. This is a vendor in Shathrath's tavern, which was added with patch 2.2, and sells notably an item which was only added in patch 2.4, the gigantic bag. This is a 22 slot bag that was only available very late in the game and cost 1000 200 gold to buy. This was very interesting to find and as soon as I saw it, I quickly copied my main character a couple of times to have enough gold to fill my bag slots and bank with those bags. This would be a good addition from the start of the game in my opinion. It would help solve some of the gold inflation a little bit by removing some gold from the economy. It would also only work early on obviously when everyone is gonna want to buy those bags and then the other ways of generating gold will take over, specifically protection paladin dungeon farming. But it's good to know at least for the first few weeks of the game, gold will still retain a decent value, hopefully. The next thing that's in the game right now is the NPC Zephyr. For those who don't know, this NPC was added in the last patch of Burning Crusade and allowed players revered with the Keepers of Time to have a teleport directly to Caverns of Time, saving you a lot of flying time, especially if you were Alliance and your only options were to go to Stormwind and fly from there. Well, in the beta, this NPC is there. Obviously, there's no way to test whether the teleport actually works as it requires being revered with the Keepers of Time, which is not doable at this level, but it's really nice to see that this NPC will maybe be in the game from phase 1, saving a lot of traveling time to a lot of people. Again, like most of the things on this video, this could be unintended and removed by Blizzard, but only time will tell. Next up, right outside the tavern, we have the daily quest giver for the badges of justice, Wind Trader Zareem. This guy was added in patch 2.3 and he used to give dailies that would rotate every day and would ask you to kill a different heroic boss every day. You could see which boss you had to kill for the day by looking at the holograph on his left. The daily rewarded two badges of justice and the heroic bosses themselves in each dungeon would also drop badges of justice, so it was a nice and easy way to farm badges of justice every day. Obviously this guy is in the game right now, but there's no way to see whether he actually does give the dailies as they require you to be level 70 to pick them. Nonetheless, I believe this might be an oversight and this will probably be removed before the launch of the game to keep the scarcity of badges intact as it was originally. But I could be wrong and maybe Blizzard does want those dailies in the game from day one, who knows. Or maybe the NPC is just there but doesn't give dailies. Either way, this is something to check if and when the level cap is increase to 70 in the beta. The last thing in Shatrat before we leave is about raid testing. Right now in the beta, there's an NPC in every capital city called Nexus Lord Dungeon Raid Jr. with the title PTR Instance Teleportation. You might be wondering, what's so surprising about that? Well, a few days ago, we released a video about how to increase your chances to be invited to the beta, which you should check by the way if you still haven't been invited. And in that video, I speculated whether or not we would have raid testing in the beta slash PTR for Classic TBC. I said that we very likely would, as Blizzard has said during their presentation that they are looking at tweaking boss encounters to make them more in line with how much more knowledgeable players are nowadays. And to do that, I speculated that they will certainly be doing raid testing, and with this NPC in capital cities, it looks like they probably are. 
When you click the NPC, he says, I can teleport you directly into any raid or dungeon. This is just a teleport, not a matchmaking service. So I hope you have a party ready to tackle the challenges waiting inside. This is interesting because in Classic WoW, for the longest time, Blizzard decided not to test raids, to keep them novel as a surprise for players. Obviously, the surprise turned out to be how easy they were, and later on, Blizzard did test a couple raids like Zul'Gurub and Naxxramas. And it looks like they will be running tests for the raids in TBC too. So expect to see tests for Karazhan, Gruul's Lair, and Mactheridon's Lair soon. The good news is that even if you don't have access to the beta, those will probably be ran on the PTR, which everyone can have access to. So get ready for that. Alright, let's now leave Shatrat and go to Booty Bay. In a previous video about the most insane grinds in TBC, I mentioned the Spectral Tiger and the NPC which trades it, Landjord Longshot. Again, this NPC is the one which you can trade your WoW trading card game codes to receive different rewards. The WoW TCG game was discontinued in 2013 and replaced by Hearthstone, but the old TCG codes still work to this day in retail. You can go to the Blizzard website, put your codes in there, and then receive a code that you can enter at this NPC. In the previous video, I speculated that if this NPC is in the game, it may be possible to receive a Spectral Tiger or any other TCG mount in classic TBC, which would make you a member of a very, very small group of players which kept their codes up until today or that found codes recently. So I mentioned that even if the NPC is on the beta, which he is by the way, there's no way Blizzard would allow anyone to test him on the beta, as if you did that, your TCG code would be gone and you would have a Spectral Tiger on the beta, which would be deleted once the beta is over. And as I predicted, Landro Longshot is in the game, but he has no dialogue option to give him any codes. If you go to him on retail, you will see a lot of dialogue options to do that. Will those dialogue options be enabled in the live game, it's hard to say. I think it would be incredibly cool if they were, but only time will tell. What's for certain is that if this NPC does indeed work in Classic TBC, if you see anyone on your server around riding a Spectral Tiger, know that they are among a very very small number of players in the world to have a chance to be riding this mount in Classic TBC. Next up, we have a small trick that will allow you to receive any racial mounts from a different race in your faction, but without needing to be exalted with them. How this works is that right now in Classic WoW, mounts are bind on use, meaning that you can buy them, but as long as you don't use them, you can trade them to anyone you want, no matter their race. So what you can do, for example, is get a night elf friend of yours, trade him or her 900 gold, and get them to give you the mount on your human or gnome or whatever. Once the pre-patch for classic TBC drops, that mount will then turn bind on pickup and you will be able to use it and you just skip the need to be exalted with Darnassus. A neat little trick that has been confirmed to work in the beta. Keep in mind however that not all the races can ride all the mounts. Obviously, horde races cannot ride alliance mounts and vice versa. But even inside a faction, there are some restrictions. Humans and night elves for example cannot ride mechano striders. And another thing that people were wondering is whether it's possible to save gold by buying a mount skill in Classic WoW right now and then waiting for the pre-patch and buying the mount in TBC. As the skill is cheap in Classic and the mounts are expensive, but it will be the other way around in TBC. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. The skill you can buy right now in Classic, horse riding, tiger riding and whatever, is converted to the base 60% mount skill. And the only way to get 100% mount skill automatically is by having an epic mount in your bags or bank, which defeats the point of saving gold. However, if you're someone in your level 30s, this will save you a little bit of money, but I don't think many players are in that scenario. Another thing that I noticed is that there's a lot of quests that have been made easier on retail throughout the years. You see, every time I have been leveling a new character on retail, I always chose to level him or her through Outland. It's my favorite zone and I know the quests very well, which allowed me to indirectly prepare for classic TBC. But what I found out is that a lot of quests have been made way easier in retail throughout the years, specifically the elite group quests. In retail, those mobs you have to kill for those group quests are not elites and you can easily solo them. Not really the case in TBC. A lot of mobs are harder than in retail and they require you to have at least another person with you to take them on. 
Another thing is that Negrand has had its quests changed a little bit in retail throughout the years. For example, the Nezingwari quest that require you to kill a certain amount of mobs, on retail you only need to kill 15 of them for each step of the questline. In classic TBC, it's 30. And the big boss animals mobs that you have to kill for the last quests have been made easier on retail too. In classic TBC, they are elites and they hit way harder. I had to get another person to help me with those quests, which was interesting. Obviously, this will probably not be changed as it has been that way in original TBC all the way through, but it's interesting to see nonetheless. And the last unexpected thing I noticed on the beta is that dynamic spawning is in the game. Obviously the beta is extremely layered slash phased. I assume the beta servers are just small test servers that aren't that robust, so they want to keep them from lagging. I also assume that they don't want players to compete with each other for questing, as the goal here is to test every quest as fast as possible, and with as many different players as possible. Because if 5 players group up for a quest, that's 4 potential bug reports that could not be made for a particular quest. But the thing is, other than layering, there's also dynamic spawning in the game. The first time I noticed that was in the grand, when there was for the first time 3 or 4 people around me. The mob suddenly started respawning way faster. I don't know if this is intended, or if it's a beta thing only, but if this is put in the live game for launch, it will make questing way easier and faster, and maybe questing will be faster than dungeon farming. And with that said, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys found this video interesting or entertaining. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more videos like this in the future. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.